What's up guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna break down four of the primary stages of a typical traditional rendering that I do. Uh, yeah, so... So in traditional rendering, what I'm talking about is marker, airbrush, pencil, paint on marker paper, or an illustration board or something like that. Traditional versus digital, let's say. So let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> All right, so stage one, the very first thing after the outline is done, which is, you know, the drawing stage, in a rendering, the first stage is going to be using markers to block in the areas. This is going to be the color. This is going to also be the gray tones. This is essentially we're creating all the hard shapes with ink so that the later stages have something to kind of work with. I personally don't tend to do as much transition work and blending with markers, although in some instances I will. It'll depend on the paper, it'll depend on how much time I have, and depend on the markers that I'm using. So in this particular example, I'm basically using the markers as a way to create the harshest shapes that I'm going to have in this entire piece. I want to get the color saturation on point, and I want to get all the gray toned areas as blocked out as cleanly as possible. I'm essentially creating a roadmap for the next stage, which is airbrushing. Stage two. <laughs> stage two is airbrushing. This is where all the gradients are done. This is where the softest part of the work is done. These are the transitions from a dark blue to a light blue, as well as taking the base gray that I did with marker and making it a bit darker. While I'm working this stage, what I'm looking to do is not only bring up the saturation of the ink by going over everything a little bit, this also helps to balance out the color families a little bit so that everything feels a little bit more connected. What I'm also looking to do is fade the colors from the darkest stuff to the lightest stuff or the other way around. Taking the grays, for example, that I've blocked out for some of the front end detail and using the airbrush to take that medium gray and make it darker as I go. This way I'm getting a little bit more control over my values and allowing that value transition to be as clean as possible. Some alternatives to this might be uh, you could use color pencil or chalk pastels to get the same kind of soft transitions. I happen to really like airbrushing because it's fast, the paint dries really, really quickly, but you do have to be careful. With marker papers, the paper is really, really thin, so you don't want to warp it. You want to be careful and build up the tones really, really carefully. But I love doing it with airbrush freehand, no masking, because it just kind of creates the softness from the hard shapes that we created with marker. This leads us into stage number three. And this leads us into stage number three. This is the first stage of the details. I, I typically do these with color pencil. Sometimes I'll typically do this stage with color pencil. Yeah, of course, why would I use anything else? It's the first stage of detailing. This stage I typically do with colored pencils. It doesn't really matter which brand I'm using. I use a bunch of different brands, and something like that will have to break down in a separate video anyways. But the reason for pencil in this stage is because now we're going to be able to define some edges, both soft edges and start to firm up some of the edges. In this type of artwork, not everything is a hard edge and not everything is a soft edge. This is part of why I like marker in the beginning and then we soften it up with a little bit of airbrush and then we start to bring the edges back a little bit with color pencil. But color pencil isn't as harsh as the final detail stage so we're kind of using these stages to bring edges to focus or out of focus depending on how we use the tool at that time. So in the case of pencil I'm chasing some of the edges to create highlight areas. I'm also somewhat mapping out what I'm going to do in the final detail stage but the important thing is to kind of capture some of those edges that got a little bit buried in the airbrushing. Now there is a rationale behind this. I tend to like to go a little bit darker with the marker and the airbrush and push a little bit harder, especially if I'm working on white paper. The reason for that is paper is white. It's the brightest thing that we're gonna to have to work against. And markers and airbrush are essentially dye based. So we're darkening as we go. And the darker I go with those stages, the more the highlights will stand out. So I want to go just a little bit over dark with some of the initial work so that the highlights have something to contrast against. I don't know if you guys can hear the dogs in the background. I rarely record voiceovers, and of course the only time they're going to howl is while I'm doing the voiceover. Awesome. Moving right along. 
So I'm using the pencil really to kind of establish these details, but I don't want to over sharpen them, which is why I'm using pencil instead of paint. I'm kind of creating that guidelines to what I want as the final details. Some of these will be completely gone over with paint and some of them will just be used with a little bit of paint to enhance them just a little bit. Now on stage four, the last deed. Now on stage four, this is the last step in this particular rendering. And that's details essentially part two. While the pencil is creating details and edges for us, the paint is gonna be what gives us the most definitive details and edges as well as the brightest highlights. So this has to be done a little bit carefully. But there's a reason all these things happen in this particular order, because we kinda of wanna work loose and then start to tighten up as we go. We want to create these highlights as a last stage as opposed to an early stage because we want the white to sit on top of the artwork. We don't necessarily wanna work around it as we're going. So what I'm using now is the paint to chase some of the edges that I did with pencil and enhance it with a little bit of highlight because in reality, pencil is only gonna go so opaque. Paint is gonna be as opaque as, as you're willing to let it go, as the way you mix it or the way that you layer it. And of course, these final details, highlights, and edges are really what brings some focus and some interest to the piece overall. While this is something that's conceptual and loose, my focus is really on this front end detail so that I can convey an idea to a builder to see what they like. So I'm not as focused about details as they go towards the back. I'm really more focused on that front end area. It's kind of big, huh? It's big. And lastly, I also want to cover that not every single rendering I do follows this exact process. Although the roadmap is essentially the same, Depending on the materials I'm using or the surface I'm working on, I have to kind of ebb and flow with that a little bit. So my choice of markers, my choice of airbrush paints, my choice of substrate, the surface that I'm even using, as well as the pencils and the paints are all relative to what I'm doing. How much time I have, the area that I'm in, how, the materials that I have with me that I'm capable of doing. I always want to do the best work possible. However, sometimes time is a constraint. So I don't want to say we're going to cut corners, but we're going to figure out where we can save time. Something like this is very quick, conceptual, and certainly on the loose side. Doing some good details towards the end is gonna be sort of what tightens it up. A good rendering also comes from a good sketch. And so I'll probably have to do a completely different video on how to do a good sketch that will lead to this stage. Because a rendering is only as good as the line work underneath. If the line work is out of whack, then the rendering isn't going to save it any. So it's about fundamentals, really. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Gosh, I hope that was recorded the whole time. <laughs>